In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at the results of a Nash trend analysis. Specifically, we want to look at the element forces in C-beam elements. So in this tutorial, you're going to see me display the moments and the shear forces in this model that you see here on the screen. Now, before going forward, uh, there are two bullet points to go over. Number one, the post-processor web app is free for MSC Nash trend users. Number two, this post-processor web app is only compatible with MSC Nastran. This is not compatible with another version of Nastran. So if you want to download and access uh, today's post-processor web app, you can go to theengineeringlab.com. You can go to free download here in the top right and sign up for the post-processor web app. Um, you have two options. You can either use the online version or you can download your own installer and use the web app on your own desktop. Now, let's go back here and talk about this example. So this example is actually from the Patron verification or the Patron post-processing manual. Actually, this example is going to be problem one. So this is a frame fixed on one end and loaded on the free end. So let's go ahead and go back here and start this exercise. So to start off with, go to the tutorial section of the web app and go to the post-processing tutorial section and click starting BDF files for this example that's called C-bar element forces, stresses, and displacements. So let's go ahead and click on that link. And when you go to your downloads directory, extract the zip file and then inside is the bulk data file for the beam model and then the H5 file that contains the result of the statics analysis. And we'll go back to the home page and here on the far right, we'll click on the viewer button. We'll go in and upload the bulk data file. And since we want to look at results, we'll go ahead and look at the H5 file also. So we'll upload the H5 file. And then this should open the post-processor web app here if we change the color and reorient this a little. The first plot that we get is a deformation plot. If we scroll down a little, you can turn the shape plot on and off. So this is before it's loaded and then after it's loaded. Uh, here, if we want to select a different data set, uh, maybe element force, we'll do that in a moment. You can select a different data set and then select a different subcase. Here, what I want to show you is subcase three or four rather. And then we uh, reorient this model. We actually show you the twisting in the beam elements. Uh, let's scroll down a little. Right now, the scale factor is 10. So this is exaggerating the deformed shape. Let's go back down to maybe one. And here, uh, let me look at this and make sure this is being done properly. Okay, so this is a scale factor of two. This is what it looks like when you have scale factor of three, and it's going to use a scale factor of one. So here, I loaded this model with a moment here at the free end so that we could get twisting in the beam elements. Uh, normally, they don't show you the rotations at the nodes, but the rotations at the nodes are very important when it comes to looking at the twisting in the beam elements. So if I wanted to, let's go ahead and change the color and maybe turn on the cross section. So this is before deformation. And this is what it looks like after being twisted. So I wanted to show you how to look at actual rotations in the nodes, how to look at the uh, twisting in the beam cross section. So that's how you look at that. Uh, if we wanted to, let's go ahead and turn off the cross sections, change back to the white background and go back to the post-processor. Uh, if you wanted to, let's see if I can do this here. You can select both the, or here, let's just focus on the rotations. Here I'm selecting the rotation components of the displacements. And then here we look at some labels. Um, we can take a look at some more data here on the screen. Okay, now let's go back here and do this. Uh, you'll notice that the maximum labels are not on right now. That's because the marker plot is off. If you click this button, this will use markers with different colors that represent different values at the nodes. So here, 
Let me see which uh, component it is. So right now we're looking at the rotation about the Y axis. And we turn on our labels here. We get told where the maximum values are. But here I think we want to look at the minimum labels. So here if we look at the very end node or grid. This is the amount of twisting that's happening at this node. This value is in radians. So you can see that I am getting a twisting of uh, negative 21 radians. Uh, this is why one would want to look at the rotations. You want to make sure that the amount of twisting is reasonable. Here we're getting a rotation of negative 21 radians, which is a lot of twisting. This analysis has a problem with it, but I wanted to show you the importance of displaying the rotations when you're dealing with the uh, beams. Now. Uh, you can look at the other subcases. Maybe we'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and see this. It's very important that you turn on the marker plot here. And then I don't, I don't see anything happening here. That's okay. We we'll leave that subcase off for another day. Uh, what I want to do next is show you how to look at your element forces. So let's go ahead and switch to the element force bar data set, and maybe we'll take a look at this uh, first subcase. Here, let's go ahead and turn on the arrow plot and let's turn on all the data. And maybe let's go ahead and do this. Let's maybe rotate the model a little. And let's zoom in. So here you can see that we have a lot of data displayed right now. Let's, let's rotate the model a little. We have the moments for both ends of the beams. We have the shear forces displayed and we have the actual force and the torque displayed also. So here maybe let's just display a few moments at the beginning. So this is what the moments look like. This is what the shear forces look like and I can do this for the other elements. I can go element by element and inspect what's going on. If you wanted to you can use the maximum labels option to quickly find uh, which elements have the highest uh, responses. So if you wanted to look at maybe the moments, we can use the maximum labels to identify that element 1 has a high moment and then element 11 also has, well it actually has the lowest moment. So you can go and use the controls for that. Uh, Let's go ahead and look at some beam stresses. So let's go ahead and select stress bar. And maybe we'll look at subcase one also. Now, when you look at the stress output, you get the stress output normally at four points on the cross section. So let's go ahead and show you that right now. So if you look here, we have data or stresses for points C, D, E, and F. And we're only looking at data for one end of the beam. If we wanted to look at data for the other end of the beam, we will select these other four components of stress. So let's go ahead and select those. And now we have data for both end A and end B. And then we're looking at the data for the four corners. Now, if the arrows are pointing away from each other, then we have tension in the stress. If the arrows are pointing towards each other like they are here in the bottom, then we have compression for the stress. Let's see if there's anything to go over in this exercise. Did I cover everything I wanted to cover? And like I said, this is from the Patran post-processing manual. I recommend you go through this uh, as you go through this exercise. And I think we're pretty much at the end of the tutorial. Oh yeah, there's one last thing I wanted to leave you off with. Um, sometimes you might be dealing with uh, structural systems that have hundreds of components with them. And you have to go inside the model and inspect the results. Here, we have a first person view option. So if you click in first person view and you click enter controls, you can use the keyboard and the mouse to navigate the model like you would a video game. So for those who do play video games, uh, you'll find this method of, of viewing the model very natural. So here I'm just going through the various beam elements and I'm looking at what the beam stresses are. And so this was another capability I wanted to show off because I think this will help out a lot of other users out there. So 
that's a quick look at how to look at beam forces and stresses in the post processor web app. Again, if you want this web app, it's free to MSC Nastran users. It's only compatible with MSC Nastran, not any other version of Nastran. And if you go to the website, theengineeringlab.com, in the top right hand corner, there's a blue button. Click that button, sign out the, or fill out the form, and we'll get you started with using the post processor web app. Thank you for watching.